In this video, we are going to walk through your first steps with Substance 3D Stager. You can think of Stager as a virtual photography studio. Stager allows you to assemble objects and arrange props in 3D space to build a scene or a set. The process involves dragging and dropping objects into the 3D view, applying materials to the objects, and creating lights to illuminate the scene. The Assets panel contains objects, materials, lights, and images to help you build your scene. The outline of the objects can be viewed in the Scene panel. This panel allows you to select and organize objects. The Properties panel allows you to adjust parameters such as object scale or material color. Now let's dive in and build a scene in Stager as we take a hands-on approach to learning the tool. So I'm going to create just a new Stager document. And if you're following along in the content folder, you can grab the rollerskate.fbx 3D model file. We can drag and drop that right here into the 3D view. I'm gonna place it here in the center of the grid. Here you can see in the scene hierarchy, we have the roller skate as a folder group. If I expand this, we can see all of the mesh parts that make up this 3D model. Now I'm going to come over here to my properties and select the transform option. And I'm just going to set the position to 0, 0, 0 on the X, Y, and Z. That will just center the object in the grid based on the object's origin point. Most of the work that you do will be in this large 3D view. So to navigate the view, you can hold down the Alt key and use the left mouse button to orbit the view. You can use the Alt key and the middle mouse button to pan the view. And you can use the Alt key and the right mouse button to zoom in and out. If you ever get lost, you can tap the F key on the keyboard to focus the view. Here at the top of the 3D view, we have an option for ray tracing. If I enable this option, you can see here that the 3D view will give me a render preview. As I navigate my scene, you can see that the render preview is updating, and it will refine as soon as I stop manipulating the 3D view. If we come over here to the ray tracing options, you'll notice that the render with GPU is enabled as well as interactive ray tracing. If you disable the render with GPU, the rendering process will happen on the CPU. The GPU is faster to process, but it does require a more performant graphics card. To get back to the Assets panel, we can click this box icon at the lower left of the screen. So now we're going to begin to build materials. So I'm going to come over here to my Assets, and I'm going to select the Material Filter. So now we're seeing all of the materials in the Assets. And here in the Search field, I'm going to start to type in Leather. And so now we have these three leather materials. So I'm going to left-click in the viewport to deselect the skate. I can now grab this natural cowhide leather material, left click and drag and drop that over different mesh parts on the skate. I'm going to apply the leather to the side of the boot. I let go of my mouse and this leather material is now applied. I can see in the scene that the upper left object was selected and this material was applied. Now here in the properties, I can make changes to this material. So for example, I'm just going to repeat this material across the surface with a value of two. And then I'm going to scroll down to get to the cowhide color, and I'm going to choose a new color value. In my case here, I'm just going to choose something like this light blue here. You can choose any color you like for your skate. So now I would like to apply this material to other sections of the boot. So in order to do that, I'm going to use my sample tool. Over here on the toolbar, we have several tools. I'm going to use the sample tool, so I'll select it. It gives me an eyedropper. I will select the material that I just applied. Now I can hold down the shift key to move the sample tool into apply mode. And then I will move over here to the tongue of the boot and then left click to apply that material. This process will link the materials together. So changing one will update the other. Now I'm going to use my viewport navigation to just rotate around to the back side, hold down the shift key once more, and then left click on the side of the boot to apply the material once more. So now I have applied this material to three different parts on the 3D object. Next, I'm gonna take a look at this strap here towards the back. 
I'm gonna grab that same natural cowhide leather. Let's left click, drag and drop and place it right here on the strap. You can see the strap object is highlighted. So I'll let go of my mouse. It applies the material. I'm noticing here that my sample tool is still selected. So I can just come over here to my viewport and I can press the V key on the keyboard or just choose the select tool. I don't want to accidentally sample or apply my material. Okay, so just as we did before, let's come over here to the repeat options. You can see I'm in the properties panel now, and I'm gonna set this repeat to a value of two. I'm going to scroll down and I will click the color swatch. This time I'm gonna choose a bright yellow color value. So now I'm going to navigate around here towards the front of the skate once again. Here I'm going to use this natural suede leather. Let's left click and drag and drop it here to this upper part of the boot where the loopholes are. And I'll drag and drop this material. Here you can see the properties is already set for the material I just applied. Let's come over here to the repeat. We'll set a value of two. I'll scroll down. And once again, I'm just gonna change the material color value. Here I'll click the swatch. And now I can see that Stager is remembering the color values that I've been working with. I'm gonna choose this yellow color that I just created. And so now I have this color matching. Next, I'm gonna come back over to my starter assets and I'm going to choose or do a search for a rubber material. So here we have this rubber material. I'm gonna left click and drag and drop that here to the sole of the boot. So the material is applied. Again, the properties panel is updated. This time I'm gonna scroll down here where I have the color. And again, I'm just gonna choose a new color value. This time I'm going to start with my blue. However, I'm going to make this just a little bit more saturated and slightly darker. Now, another option I'm going to change here on this material is the roughness parameter. The roughness controls how reflective a surface is. So for example, if I decrease the roughness, I'm making the material more smooth and thus we start to see more reflections here in the surface. So let's zoom out once more and let's start to take a look at applying some additional materials. Here in the starter assets, I'm gonna do a search here for metal. And now I'm gonna drag and drop this metal material here to the loopholes for the laces. And I'm gonna grab another version of this metal material. I'm gonna drag and drop it here to the lace clips. Now for these objects, I would like to come back over to my materials and underneath the base color, let me click the color swatch and I'm gonna choose my yellow color value once again. And that will create a gold material just by simply changing the color value. Let's rotate our viewport here towards the top. And here I have this inside part of the boot. Let's grab a material for this. So I'm gonna clear out my search and just look through my materials. And I think I'm gonna use this material called Jersey fabric. So let me left click, drag and drop, and then just place it here on this inside boot. With that in place, I'll come over here to my repeat and I'm gonna set this to be a two for the repeat value. And once again, I'm gonna scroll down and just simply change the color. Here, I'll grab the color swatch and I'm just gonna use that dark blue value. Now, let's navigate around and take a look at how we can apply a material for the laces. For the laces, I'm going to grab a material from the Substance 3D Assets website. On the site, I did a search for rope. This climbing rope might be pretty cool, so I'm gonna use this. I'm going to download the SBS AR file. This file can be used directly in Stager. I supplied the climbing rope material as part of the content. So in the content folder, you can simply drag and drop the climbing rope and place it right onto the laces. So when I let go of my mouse, I can see the material is applied. Here in the material properties, we need to make some changes. So let's come over to our repeat value and I'm gonna try a value here of four. Yeah, I think that's gonna work pretty good. So now I'm just gonna scroll down and this particular material has multiple color inputs. So let's start to change some of these color values. Starting with the first swatch, I'm just gonna use that blue, that dark blue value that I'd already created. And then I'm gonna move over to the second color. I think I'm gonna leave this one, this white grayish value. Let's move over here to the purple and I'm gonna switch this to my yellow, bright yellow color. And then lastly here, I'm gonna come over to this final swatch and then I'm gonna choose my lighter blue value. And so with those colors set, that is going to finish my material for the laces. Substance 3D Assets is a great resource for quickly grabbing materials for your project. So let's continue to work on the skate. Now I'm going to navigate my scene and focus more here towards the bottom where I have the wheels. Let's start with the metal material. 
So here with my materials selected in my starter assets, I'm going to do a search for metal and I'm just gonna use this basic metal material. I'm gonna drag and drop the metal material and place it here on the base of the skate. So with this material applied, here in the properties, I'm gonna come over to the roughness option and I'm going to increase the roughness option. This makes the reflections more diffused. Now, instead of repeating that process over and over again, I can rely on my sample tool. Again, if we come over to the toolbar, we have the sample tool. I'm going to select the tool. I'm going to sample that metal material. And now holding down the shift key, I can apply this material to any of the mesh parts. So here you can see that I'm going to just simply click to apply the same metal material to these various mesh parts. Here I'll rotate around towards the back. And let's make sure that we get the axle. And so here, let me just spin around towards the front and I need to make sure that I also get this bolt for the stopper as well as the bearings in the wheels. So next, I need to create a material for the wheels, the bushings and the stopper. I'll tap the V key on the keyboard to go to my select tool. Now here in my starter assets, I'm going to do a search for soft and you can see that we have a soft plastic. I'm gonna left click and drag and drop this material to one of the wheels. Now over in the materials property, we're gonna scroll down past the base color. We're not gonna set the color. We're gonna keep scrolling down to where we have this option called interior. I'll expand the properties. And here you can see that we have a setting called subsurface scattering. I'll expand that option. And here we have a scattering color. This is an advanced material setting. Using the scattering distance, you can control how far light travels through the surface before it is absorbed. And it's really great for creating materials like wax or skin, or in our case, polyurethane roller skate wheels. So let's come over here to the scattering color. And I'm just going to choose that bright yellow that I had previously. And now I need to apply this material to the rest of the wheels. And once again, I'm going to rely on my sample tool. This time I'll just tap I on the keyboard to grab the sample tool. I will select the wheel, hold down shift, and then click on all of the wheels, the bushing, and the stopper. Now I have one wheel in the back here I wanna make sure I don't forget, so let's, let's select that guy as well. I'll hit the V key to go back to my select tool, and now we have fully textured the wheels. So next, I'd like to add a logo for my skate. So I'm going to go back to the content folder and I'm gonna grab the roller skate logo illustrator file. You can left click and drag and drop the illustrator file right here to the side of the skate. This will apply the logo as a decal. Think of it like a sticker on the surface. So as I rotate, you can see that the logo is applied to the side of the boot. I can use the manipulator that I have here to adjust the scale. I'll hold down the shift key to uniformly constrain the scale. I will left click on one of the nodes and then just drag the widget inwards to scale the logo. It can be a little easier to adjust this by turning off the ray tracing mode. So here I will position the logo. We could also use this point here at the top to do a rotation if we like. So here with the logo in place, I'm now going to enable my ray tracing once again. And you'll notice here that the material that we have for the side of the boot now has this graphic layer applied on top with the placement set to decal. And we have a few material properties that we can change. So in this case, I would like to turn this into a metallic surface. And I'm gonna take this roughness slider and move it towards zero, which is going to make this highly reflective. So now as I move my scene around, you can see that we start to get this nice reflective quality to the logo. Another aspect of using Illustrator or Photoshop files here in Stager is that we can utilize artboards. So if I come over here to the image option and click, you'll notice here that I have access to any of the artboards that are part of the document. So here using the artboard three, I can actually change the logo and get a completely different look. Experiment with the different artboards for the skate you are creating. In my case, I'm just gonna change to artboard one, because I like the concept of giving this a little bit of a metallic look. Let's add another instance of this logo to the tongue of the boot. I'm gonna jump out of my ray tracing mode and then I'm going to just scale the logo.
Now I'll jump back into my ray tracing mode and I'm just gonna make some changes once again here to the material properties. So that's gonna take care of all of the materials that I wanna apply to the skate for this particular scene. The next step in the process is to create a camera, establish our lighting, and then render our scene. So to do that, I am gonna come over here to my assets. Let me clear my search and I'm gonna come over to the images tab. Here we have several of these images we call backplates. For this shot, I'd like to place the skate into an actual photograph. And I'm gonna use one of the images that we ship here in Stager. I'm gonna use this exterior table 03. So I'm just going to left click to apply the image. You'll notice here in the scene view, a camera has been created for me. And under the camera properties, the background option is enabled and the image has been supplied as my background image. You can click the edit button to edit this image if you need to do any post work in Photoshop. You can also browse for your own custom images as well. So we have our skate and we have our background, but the skate doesn't look like it's actually in the environment. The lighting is off and our perspective is wrong. So I'm gonna use this option here under the actions called match image. I'll select match image. And you can see here that we have three options. It will set camera output size to the image aspect ratio. It will create lights for me, as well as match camera perspective. Stager is using an AI based solution to create the lights and to match the camera perspective. So all I need to do is just simply click okay. And just like that, it looks like my skate is now sitting in the environment of this background plate. I'll notice here that the focal length has been set. If I come over here to the environment tab and then come over to lights, I can see that an environment light based on that background image was created and an image light was added. And you'll also notice that the resolution is set based on the image aspect ratio of that background plate. When you use the match image option, you wanna make sure that you do not move or reposition this camera because the camera has been matched to that background plate. If you want to continue to make changes to your scene, you can use the viewport camera. To access the viewport camera, come up here towards the top where we have this dropdown and choose viewport camera. Now we can continue to adjust and work with our scene in this perspective view without disrupting our shot or render camera. You can also create multiple cameras by just clicking this add camera button. In our case here in the scene view, I'm gonna rename my camera here to shot camera. And if I wanna get back to this camera, I can simply click on it here in the scene view. Again, don't forget, we have the drop down where you can switch between all of the cameras that are available in your scene. Now in this case, I'm gonna jump back to my view camera. So here I'm gonna select the roller skate group. Then I'm gonna come over here to edit and choose duplicate. This is gonna create a copy of my roller skate. Now you'll notice here that I have this manipulator with arrows. This is our universal controller that lets me move, rotate, and scale. Here under the toolbar, if I left click and hold, you can see that we have the select tool, we have a move tool, a rotate tool, and a scale tool, each with their own keyboard shortcuts. So for example, I'm gonna grab the move tool. This is gonna allow me to move the item. I'll grab one of the axis handles, in my case, the Z axis, and then I'm going to move the skate in the Z axis. If I grab, for example, the red or the X axis handle, I can move in the X axis. You can grab one of these planes between the two arrows to move in two directions or two axes at once. So here is the move tool. I'm now gonna hit the E key to go to my rotate tool, and then I'm gonna rotate my skate 90 degrees. Now I'll hit the W key one more time to go to the move tool and I'm gonna move the skate back here in the Z axis. So here you can see I'm just translating the skate and moving into a different direction. Here I'm staging the objects in my scene to set up a shot. So now that I have the objects in place, I'm gonna jump back to my shot camera. Now I'm not real happy with the layout, so I can always jump back here to my scene and select the main roller skate. You can hit the W key to get to the move tool. I'm gonna move the skate in the Z axis. And now I'm going to grab the second copy of my skate. And from this perspective view, it's a little hard to grab the correct axis. So here is where I would jump back here to my viewport. And then here, I'm just gonna slightly make the change. Now I'll jump back to my shot cam and that's closer to the position that I wanna have for this particular skate. Now with this shot camera selected, 
I'm gonna come over here to this depth of field option and switch it on. Now, you can see that I'm starting to get some nice depth of field in my scene. I wanna set my focus point, so I'll select the set focus point option and I'm going to select the skate here in the foreground. Now, I can adjust the blur amount to adjust my overall depth of field. And so now you can see that I have my shot set up with the skates composited into the background of this image. The lighting matches, and now I'm ready to do a render. So to do that, I'm gonna jump over here to the Render tab. Now, the Render tab is going to allow me to set my export settings, and I can have multiple cameras that I can batch export. In my case, I'm gonna use just my single shot camera. I can set the export file name, and then here I can choose the export format. In my case here, I'm going to save this as just a PNG file, and then I'm going to set a save to location. Here on the rendering preset, you can set a quality setting. The higher the setting, the more time it takes. Here I'm gonna set the value to high, and then I'll click the render button, and Stager's gonna to start to process the scene into a 2D image that I can further edit in Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop, and I've added some additional image editing enhancements using the camera raw filter, and also applying a color lookup for style. I hope you enjoyed your first steps with Substance 3D Stager. You can use Stager to stage objects and props, create lighting, and build fully realized 3D scenes. We can't wait to see what you create.